This week's episode of Storytime with the legendary Jerry. Uh, my co-host is somewhere in Europe, so she's not here with me. So I got I'm solo dolo this week, but I got on. Uh, I got this dude right here in his bag. Hey, <laughs> make, sure, make, make sure I introduce the bag yeah, first. Yeah. Uh, the bag, and then I got uh, I got super producer, uh, Mr. Nitty, a.k.a. Nitty Beats, in the house. Thank you for uh, uh, coming to bless your partner, my nigga. Hey, man, I had to be here, man. Hey, you know, you my dog, man. I had all these cats there. I'm, I'm laughing because this nigga's a silly. We, we, we had some of the silliest over the last how many years. We, we had some, some laughs together. This brother right here, not only is he talented, but he damn near want to be a fake-ass stand-up comedian. But uh, but it's my dog, though, man. So what's happening, man? What's it? <clears throat> Let me just say this for those who don't know. <clears throat> Nitty is one of the few producers that have hits, and, I, and, I, and I'm not going to age or anything. Okay. But to, to be able to go from a, a currently, like yeah. a, a record, a project like Day Day, even as far back, as a young jog record mm -hmm. that just goes to show you a lot of cats especially not not especially but a lot yeah. of producers um once they have a, a, a record as big as that they kind of just uh, just float up but you you stay relevant i noticed and a lot of producers some that's been on the show and some that come on especially from atlanta with all this talent that came up out of atlanta yeah. over the last few years they ain't grabbed none of them yeah. they didn't they didn't grab a lot of the you know the 21 savages the playboy cardies yeah. or whoever but you know, with with you snatching Day Day up, which I'm 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 jumping all around, but on Nitty Beats now, you would say that Day Day is is the driving force behind the the label. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, how you and, and, and not to cut yeah. you off, but how did you like, how did you and Day Day link up? I know here 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 West Side nigga, right? West yeah, side yeah, of yeah, yeah, yeah. West Side, West Side dude. So Day Day, um, yeah, Day Day. You know, we I try to um. I shipped it off into the, 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 the exec side and the producer because um, I want to have more control uh, with my music. You know, I'm not one of those producers that go out and try to, I want to get on this person's album or this person's album, the Jeezy I don't chase the artist. So I want to be, you know, as a, as a producer, you get more credit breaking the artist than you do working on the artist's album. Mm -hmm. So a lot of producers don't understand that part of the game. Um, but when you take an artist and you know nobody's never heard of them, and then you give them a top ten record, or it would go number one, um, an artist that's never been out, you get more recognition versus working on a Jay Z album. You know what I mean? So that's something that I did. That um, that's what I try to do with any artist. Something that I work you with. went in hand yeah. picked that came through your yeah. your label, your production yeah. company. And Day Day, he's certified gold now, right? Yeah, he's going on platinum. Yeah, he's going. Um, he's just with the single. We haven't put out an album yet. Um, but yeah, Day Day, he's in the studio working right now. Um, okay. So it's more this so. This is still your joint venture with 300 Entertainment. Uh, Day, -Day, with, Day Day. Yeah, with 300. Um, I use um, 300, I have a distribution deal over there. Okay. Um, and um, we um, shout out to Cab. They, you know, we had a good relationship, um, Lior. Um, but at the end of the day, Day Day was something that we came together and said that we're going to do it together. Okay. And um, it's been a good thing. So right now we're um, working on going to that stage two of Day Day. Uh, right, we had the initiative to get people to know him. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew him, so I like that. You know what I mean? So once we got people to know him, now we're gonna have people waiting to say, okay, what are you gonna give us next? You know what I mean? So now we at that mm -hmm. stage right now. So he's got about six hundred records that he's been recording over the last year and a half. Shit. You know what I mean? So we just um we just working, but um meanwhile, you know, I'm just trying to make it be you know a, a label when people sit back and look they be like you know what this dude really been here since 2001 yeah since eight you, ball I, I was you know say, what i mean yeah and speaking of that a lot of people that don't know your discography is it's lengthy dog okay it's lengthy okay so you you just said eight ball was that eight ball mjg that was yeah. your first was that your first major placement that was my first goal album what was record. your first major placement um well play track wise Eight ball, um, the, the city wise or national wise? Shit, both. I mean, city wise. I mean, to me, I I didn't, I, you know, Atlanta. We've been so yeah. a lot of cats is watching worldwide might not know when they say yeah. when you say city wise. So educate them. I mean, no, I mean I'm from Decatur, man. So you know, growing up, you from Decatur, right? I, I live on the east side. Okay, I don't eat claim Decatur. <laughs> I don't know where you from, nigga, but 
Uh, but no, nah, I mean, you quick, uh, to, you quick to throw that Decatur nah, shit. No, I mean, but I claim, I claim yeah. Decatur East Side. No, I claim I'm, I'm, I'm Decatur. But you know, we, it was a long time ago, like back in the days, it was a group called Ghetto Mafia. Mm -hmm. So I was, you know, a fan like anybody else. So I got into producing, making beats. So I messed around and um, produced a record. I didn't know I was producing at the time, but I did a remix to a song they had called Indicator. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I went and sampled. Big big local record here in the, in the yeah, ATL. Yeah, it was a big record. To me, that was a record that made my day. I didn't care if I produced another record. I didn't give a shit, nothing about it. But when I produced the Indicator remix with Ghetto Mafia, I was like, mm -hmm. I was good. I think I went and I didn't sample because I don't like, I always learned, I read a lot. Mm -hmm. So I was reading a lot. I said, it always said, stay away from sampling. So I went and replayed a song called Can't Hide Love by Earthwind. And um, I replayed it, and then we yeah, went and got one of the guys. Hey, that motherfucker was, whoo. Yeah, it, 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 was it, fire. shout out to Greg Street. He, um, he broke that shit. He was the one that initially, yeah. that's why I always support Greg, but he was the one that, um, you know, spent that record. And when I heard it, you know, um, I had the horns, and I played, um, had the dun, 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 mm -hmm. ooh, ah, da, you know what I mean? We got the little dude from Silk to sing the hook. Lil G. One of them guys. I ain't yeah. know him. But um but yeah, that was that was what, you know, put me on in my mind. But Atlanta wise. Now Atlanta -wise. nationally, uh, what was the record that you produced where labels and executives in the industry was just like, We got <laughs> we gotta we gotta call this. I mean it's we gotta the, call this man. Yeah, the the song that I produced that, that, that made me quit my, my job. Yeah. And made me okay, you know what, um was um Stop Playing Games by Eight Ball and I produced um, most of that album, it was mm -hmm. Eight Ball's second album um, called um, The Single was Stop Playing Games. Mm -hmm. And um, that record was the one that, you know, nationally everybody said, okay, this is a new guy in Atlanta that's producing because, you know, like I said, the niggas in Atlanta, they, they ain't really give me a shot, but I thank them now. How you feel about that shit, though? I love them. Yeah, because they can sit back and say, you was know you what? Ang we, was you angry and bitter about that? I was mad as hell. You know what I mean? But the thing was, they can sit back and say, you know, we had our, our dungeon families and we had all these cliques and shit. We didn't let a nigga like Nitty in. That nigga went out there and got it himself. So, so they got to respect can't that. Can't nobody take that. No, nah, no, nah, they can't. And, you know, I was able to um, become, you know, successful in, in their eyes. And I still represented Atlanta. And yeah. um, the second, the, once I came back, after I made a name, the person that gave me the opportunity was Jermaine Dupree. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's going to always be love, respect. On that end, you know, it's always like a like a like a big step brother type thing. You know, yeah. he he, you know, he, you know, he don't talk a lot. He don't really know you too good. So, you know, but I did learn a lot working with him. Yeah, you know we I mean? gonna so, come back to JD, but yeah. when people think of Nitty, mm -hmm. excuse me, the the one record. I mean, come on, let's be real. The one record that is your stamp that really blew yeah. you up, whether it's nationally, internationally, yeah. whatever yeah. the fuck, was Young Jock. Yeah, I mean, it's going down. Yeah, that was that was that that was that one. Yeah, man. Before that, was, did you and Jock have a relationship? How did how did that all how did that come to fruition with you and Jock put that together for it to be? I mean, cause that that was mm -hmm. a huge fucking record, man. Yeah, thank you. I mean, it, it was just it was it was just Jock, a cool guy. I met him through one of my homies, Chino, and um, Chino said, "Man, I want you to go in the studio with him." I said, "Okay." We went to the studio, went and did the record, and. Um, Started taking off, man. Then we got the support. Taking Puff, off is an understatement. Puff came Shit. in. Um, <clears throat> Block called me. He was like, um, because everybody thought the Jock was signing me, and everybody thought yep, that me and sure Block. Did. I know I did at first. Everybody thought me and Block had an issue, but me and Block knew each other prior to the Young Jock thing. Mm -hmm. So that's why when everything started taking off, everybody was like, Nitty and Block got beat. Man, we never had no problem. Never. Not not one problem. You know what I mean? But. You know, to the public, you know, we was like, you know, let them say what they gonna say, cause it was still blowing stink um stuff under our name, so we didn't care. But mm -hmm. um, shout out to Block, you know what I'm saying? He, I respect him. He did call me and ask me, was Jock signed to me? Was I planning on signing them? And I told him, no. Nah. I said, go ahead and sign him. You regret? You regret that? No, no. Nah, you don't regret right. signing the Jock. You you did the track on him, so why not benefit more with bringing him up under your umbrella? Well, I mean, at the time, I don't think I was ready. I don't think I was ready to... Um, I respect that honesty. Yeah, I don't think I was ready to sign an act um, and have them up under my umbrella because I was still on my producer stuff. And, you know, I'm always going to be... I, I love producing. So, at that time, it was a record that I did. I co-wrote it and I did the beat. 
Um, and it was just like, it was, it was, you know, we was all cool. We was on the road together. Yeah. So, you know, it was all love. But um, at the end of the day, I think back and um, I say, well, if I would have signed, this would have happened. But it's a lot of cats that I could have signed. Um, that I didn't want to sign because I didn't want to. Could have signed ones you did beats for, did tracks. Yeah, yeah, that, that you, I worked with. Yeah, a lot of like cats. who? Who? I mean, I know you did beats for a lot of folks, but yeah. I know. mean, one person that I could say that you know that um, I could have um, worked out a situation with, and um, I would say it would be Gucci. That's <laughs> yes, that's like the look. That's that was the homie. You know what I'm saying? So um, shout out to Guwap. You know what I'm saying? Um, Guwap. Yeah, Google. I mean, we he's come by the studio like you know he a workaholic, he a genius, mm -hmm. and um, you know it was like um, uh, when he did what he what I learned about him, he was one of the most talented writers or artists I ever came across because he would write records so quick. Yeah, you know I what heard I mean? that about Gucci. Like, dude is a he's not a he, he's he's another he he's, go get in there and knock out song after he's song a machine on some Tupac type. Yeah, shit. he's a machine, man. So anything that dude does. It's on purpose. It ain't by luck. He know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I think he where he at right now. You know what I mean? He deserves everything that he got. But, um, you know, one time he came to me like, man, I want to do this. I want to do this. I wanna, I'm like, man, listen, keep doing what you're doing. Because I didn't want to hold him up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because dude, too. I See, a lot of niggas can respect that shit. Yeah. Because like, you could have easily, I mean, not easy, but you could have been like, yeah. And like you just said a minute ago. You won maybe business wise ready. You was just like, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm just getting into the foray. I really, because like yeah. you say, that young jock, that that record blew up, and you would have an opportunity to sign him, and you didn't. You was like, all right, yeah. it might not be the time right now, but let me yeah. go ahead and and fall back and let him go into a situation mm -hmm. where it'd be conducive for him to win. Yeah, I, I didn't know, man. At the time, I, I didn't really know the business like I I, I know it now. Yeah. So I didn't really want to um, be in the way of nobody growing. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I could have easily put some contracts together and said, okay, let's do this. But no, nah, like I didn't want to, you know, I didn't, it's a lot of artists that I didn't, you know, might have signed them and let them go because I don't want to hold them up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, with Jock, uh, once Block, Puff got into it, I mean, they came and, and put their hands on the project. Um, you know, everybody was happy. They didn't mm -hmm. owe me no money. Still yeah. don't owe me no money. And we all, you know, we uh, we ate good off that. So once that record blew up mm -hmm. into the huge hit, I know your fucking phone. I know your phone started ringing off the damn hook. Yeah, I mean, you know, man. Everybody like, wanted a piece of that nitty. Yeah, I mean, it was more meat. so I was branding my name at the time. And, um, you know, it, it when you brand your name and, you know, you got records popping and stuff, you know, um, you know, I was one of the producers that, to me, you know, I, I was geeked on producing, and like now I didn't like once I learned the game, I didn't realize it was a lot of producers that they would be producers, but they weren't really actually hands on. Yeah. So I didn't know that part of the game, <laughs> yeah, but once exactly. I learned that part of the game, I was like, I might be one of the only real yeah, producers out like, here. Shit, actually I'm really... actually in that on the drum machine. I'm yeah, like, man. So but a lot of these cats is. is uh, Producer overseers, yeah, like, yeah, hey, yeah, and which what, I ain't taking away from whoever y'all cats do that, but you know, it's it's cats is really in there. That, mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's nothing wrong with that, man. You know, we had a good time though, and I I, I love you know to, to this day, you know, I uh, one of my homes I live in, I got three studios in there, you know what I mean. So I'm producing all around any given time. I'm producing. You actually in there? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, you come to my house, you are gonna be like, okay, this nigga here. This crazy nigga, this, or something. This nigga right here really crazy. Yeah, I got a studio set up right across my bed. Then I got one in my dining room. Then I got one in the lower level of my crib. Damn, nigga. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I just love... We just bounce from studio to studio? Yeah, I love composing, man. So, um, you know, but like I said, the whole thing with, with the music. When you love music, you love music. I didn't care about Damn the money. Right. You know what I'm saying? I could say that messing with music, you know, it, it, it took me out of anything I was doing that I had to do that I didn't want to do. It took me out of that. Um, it opened doors. It, it, you know, it helped me retire my mother. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother, she blessed, you know what I'm saying? Um, and just, you know, be a, a, a better person to open doors to help other people. And that's the key you know? right there. Yeah, so that's what it was Man, about. Back to, you, we mentioned, you mentioned earlier about J.D., Jermaine Dupree. Yeah. So. That nigga, no, nah, I'm just go ahead. <laughs> That my nigga. Now, 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 word in the street is that y'all had some beef for a minute. Man, man. we ain't had no beef. All right, I mean, I'm well, just. Well, you serious? You playing? I'm dead ass serious. Oh yeah. 
Yeah. I don't believe that, man. I, I, I'm just telling you what. I mean, I you know, I, I that, ain't, man. you know, and you, you've been knowing me for years. I ain't with that. I don't you know, say, man. But I, I mean, I'm just telling you, my nigga. That's, really? What was that, the in that, in that line, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. That's why nah, we, I don't believe So there that, wasn't, nah, I mean, it ain't about that you believe okay. that, nigga. I'm just that's what I'm telling so you. you what, now? I'm dead ass serious. Oh, okay. Yeah, nah, that, that, that y'all, it was a little, because now hold on. You were signed to So So Deaf as a producer for for a minute, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I did a little bid over there with them boys. Then why you say it? Is, it oh, okay, okay. I thought. Yeah, no. Nah, yeah. I mean, it, you, I mean, no. Nah, it was nothing wrong with so so deaf, you know. But um, I don't know. I mean, I never really understood JD. It? You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't say nothing bad about him, but I'm always salute him. You know what I'm saying? But you know, JD, he got his ways. You know what I'm saying? Like JD, you know, um, he never really talked to me a lot though. Anyway. Really, but I mean, I don't so respect it wasn't, no it wasn't man. A per, yeah, it wasn't a personal relationship. It was more strictly business. Yeah, it mm-hmm. wasn't no personal relationship with JD. You know what I'm saying? But it wasn't no beef though either. It was just, you know, dude. You know, he got his ways. He got the niggas who he talked to, mm-hmm. and he got niggas who he do business with. And um, you know, it was never. You know, I don't know. I see him. I see him. You know, he'll say what up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it ain't no buddy, buddy. What's happening? So in a way, partner. as you come along in the industry. Do you kind of see where he comes from now? But you, with you know, because I'm sure. I mean, JD been in the game since <laughs> a kid, so uh, his trust factor with a lot of niggas. He probably like, man, you know, n- nothing against you per se, person, but just a trust thing. He probably ain't gonna yeah. be open. Do you? I mean, yes. I mean, it's a yes or no. Do you? Can you kind of relate a little bit, or you still that just ain't the type of nigga you are? I mean, I don't know, man. I mean, I I'm, I'm a. In my eyes, I think I'm one of the realest niggas out here, you know, and I don't get caught up in none of this, you know, industry where this why a nigga act like this because he in the industry. You yeah, niggas say I'm a, in the industry. I, don't, a, I ain't yeah. with that, you know what I mean? mean and, you know, yeah. like I said, I, don't I, heard think, a lot, I heard a lot of people over the years giving nigga a pass, like, oh, he's nah. just an industry nigga. Like, what the fuck is an industry? Does that give you a pass? I'm, I'm nah. We're not talking about anybody in particular, but I'm like, does that give you, give you a pass to be a fucked up ass individual? No, nah, I mean, you some know. Industry shit. Nah, and we're I mean, not talking about JD. We just saying, period. No, nah, we are industry. talking about JD. Right oh, okay. Right. We're talking shit, about him. Mom. I mean, no, I mean, no. No, I'm saying about an industry. I'm saying from my perspective, when I used to hear people say, yeah, that's just an industry, man. Like, what the fuck? Yeah, like, you you give a nigga a pass for being a fucked up ass nigga. And I mean, I, on the industry? I, I'm gonna say this: I can't say JD is a bad person. I don't think I could say is. I know him. Um, I've seen and observed some of his other relationships with people, um, and I mean, people might say I act a certain way. I don't know, but yeah. with him, I mean, I think dude was a, was a brilliant, talented person. Um, some things he might have done. I might not agree with, um, but you know it's just like me trying to tell Coca Cola y'all can't change the color y'all can. That's your company, my nigga. So I can't tell you how to run it. But when it comes to my shit, you know me and dude ain't had no problem. We creatively never, did y'all ever get in and no, together we, and do any any work together? We, we did a couple of records together. Now I look back, I was it's crazy. I was looking on YouTube, and we got a couple of records that we did together. Um, uh, we had a couple of projects that we um, kind of did together. What, well, yeah, we was, well, y'all, that he y'all co-signed. Um, that was through So So Deaf or just? It was through like a joint thing between So So Deaf and Playmaker. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, um, but yeah, like we, um, I don't think we really could really, really just connect together creatively. Mm-hmm. I think because we kind of like, um, I don't really talk a lot to niggas unless I know a nigga so Sometimes people can say that about him. Yeah. But if you don't know him, like we've had some good conversations, but you know, I think personally, nigga, just a crazy ass nigga like me. Yeah. I think he moody. What's one thing you, you learned know? from being over there? One thing I learned is get a good attorney. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you know, I mean, no, I ain't say mad again hey, man, to everybody. I tell, I tell that niggas, should be anybody, no matter where you. Man, listen, man. Shit. I'm gonna tell you something, man. If you're like, a creative motherfucker. Get you an attorney, please. Yeah, get an attorney, man. Because one, I think the reason that um, you know, me and you know, a lot of cats ain't got no problems is because you know I always had good legal people on my team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, cause I, I, me personally, I wouldn't care if it's, I don't give a shit who I'm working with. Nigga owe me ten dollars. I gotta get it. And I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get it. Yeah. You know what I mean. So I, I, I don't think I'm glad that God didn't put me in that position to have to come at people like that. You know what I mean. But I ain't yeah. never had no problem with nobody like that. Um, and I do good business. You know what I'm saying. So That's like, that. I don't, I don't believe in doing bad business because you know God gave me a talent and He put me in a position to 
open doors to help other people. So that's all I want to do, man. Mm -hmm. But shout out to JD, everybody, man. So so Death Camp, and I, I hope him and Skeeter Rock iron their shit out too. What the, for people don't know, yeah. Skeeter Rock, Eddie Skeeter Rock Weathers is JD's. He was the was and, JD's yeah. right hand man. Like they would yeah. grew up together as kids. They were best friends. Yeah. Uh, but there's a situation when you say you hope they sh get their shit together. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of know. niggas don't speak on that shit. Like, you so know, it, I, I mean, speak not on that, it. Yeah, so it's a situation. You correct yeah. me if I'm wrong. Yeah. I, I want in the mix. We ain't got to go say it's three si Yeah, they say yeah. it's three sides every store. Just something happened. Yeah, something happened with business wise. Where yeah. yeah. You, like you say, yeah. Uh, Skeety Rock yeah. apparently wasn't compensated correctly. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But I mean, to keep it, I mean, is that am I saying it right, my nigga? Yeah, I mean that's that's what I heard. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, you know, I, I I think that at the end of the day, like I tell everybody, you go man, have JD on here. He gonna speak about it too. No, JD gonna, can speak about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? You and me come up here. I talk with him too. But <laughs> like I think that you know I'm I'm, I'm like this right here, man. Like Skeeter Rock, and JD, them was my nigga. Them niggas who I looked up to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So to see them go separate ways about some goddamn business or some money or whatever the situation could have been, like a lot of these whole ass niggas, they be too goddamn scared to speak up on situations and stuff. And at the end of the day, I seen a friendship slash business relationship dissolve. crumble, dissolve about some bullshit that I think could have been ironed out. And if it hmm. couldn't have been ironed out, it could have been worked out later on down the line. But not... You know, like nigga, if, if JD was to die today, nigga, JD would would probably won't ski at his funeral. You damn right. You understand niggas, what I'm saying? But you don't want that shit, nigga to be at your you funeral. See one without the other for so many years. Yeah. As long as I've been, I'm talking about yeah. back in the '90s. Yeah. So it's like these niggas who you know I looked up to. So it, it hurt me personally to see niggas go through something like that. You know what I mean? So yeah. you know a lot of niggas. You know sometimes you know maybe I should I think back like. You know, maybe I should have said some stuff to JD because a lot of niggas think, oh, okay, we can't talk to JD. We can't tell him nothing. Hmm. But back there at that time, you know, a lot of niggas, you know, JD will tell you, I always spoke my mind. I ain't bite my tongue about shit. You know what I I'm saying? I think that's one thing that a lot yeah. of niggas, and that could be a gift and a curse. Yeah. Because a lot of niggas, yeah. they, they want some real shit. But when they come across a nigga like you, that's gonna be straight up. You know, yeah. it, you know. Let's be real. It's, that shit intimidate a lot of these niggas out here, man. Oh, when no. you straight up and what they see is what they get. They don't. Yeah. People claim they want that, but yeah. you think that hurts you coming up in this industry? No. Or you a nigga that didn't bite your tongue? No. I didn't whether it's executives or whoever care. it was. I mean, it, it, all you the think it hurt you man. when it, you know? Because a lot of nah. these niggas is phony, fickle ass. No, nah, I think at the end of the day, a lot of these niggas, if they tried to blackball me, you know, I know niggas that have blackballed them in other ways. <laughs> Cause you gotta when you when you leave that studio you gotta come back to the real world, you know what I mean. So I think everybody, but black, black follows. We gonna leave. Come that. on, we gonna leave I, that alone. But I, I'm I know saying like is. you know I, I ain't never been that type of nigga. And you know any nigga that know, I'm all I respect everybody. But you gotta respect me, and you know just do good business. But you know I don't I ain't bite my tongue about. I don't I don't have some conversation with some niggas that I'd be like man I shouldn't have said this to them. Yeah yeah I have. There's a couple of cats, a couple of artists. A couple producers, um, we might have they might have said some slick shit in passing, you know what I'm saying? I'd be like, what you mean? Then we might have had some quick little tussle words or whatever, you know what I mean? Little, little but, tussle word, a little yeah, Tom Rashley. Yeah, and they, you know, niggas know, you know what I'm saying? But nigga be like, man, some nigga be like, man, nigga, he, work, he hard to work with. I ain't hard to work with, nigga. I don't take no bullshit, and I ain't no pussy. So at the end of the day, nigga, I'm going to keep doing music. Work with me if you want to. I got an open door policy, and that's that's what that's what I'm gonna die behind. You know what I mean? So, you know, I love everybody, Jerry. You know so what I'm saying? with you know me and you, we yeah. we we've seen that ascension mm. of this Atlanta music scene, man. We've yeah. seen it from embryo stages to full grown. Yeah. So, with that being said, shout out Tango Red too. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> who who I don't even know who that is. Who is okay. Tango Red? I, I remember the hearing some records. <laughs> that was your. You know who that boy is, man. Shout out Tango Red, man. Jerry, hey, he put that boy on, man. You, man. I did put a nigga on. You put, Jerry put, put a nigga on, man. Shit. Tango Red, man. But yeah, shout out Tango Red, man. But you, you see how that, that shit threw me off. I ain't heard that nigga. Hey, listen so though. Hey, what? listen. I ain't gonna talk about it. But what? one thing I respect, Tango Red was a star. He just didn't have all the music. 
That nigga was a star. That nigga had blonde hair. Well, you know, JD dropped us when we got over the Virgin. Really? When he came to Virgin when he was. Yeah, yeah that, that was his little star, man. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Tango Red. Hope you're doing good, Shut though, man. Go ahead, though, man. What you saying? My bad. Yeah. Uh, but you threw me over, dog. Right, when bad, I tell you, heard that shit is so long ago. I know, gone. man. I know. But you know what? So, you did a good thing. Go ahead. Yeah, whatever, nigga. You trying to. <laughs> <laughs> this type of shit I got to deal with with this nigga. Yeah, I know. Come on. Uh, so, what the, what I was saying is, we both didn't see. We didn't, we didn't see Atlanta. Yeah. Atlanta scene is 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 what everybody around the world culture. Okay. Mm-hmm. We we didn't you know with you being the East Side Decatur nigga and yeah. being right here in the A, you didn't mm-hmm. seen it all. Mm-hmm. Right now with the state of what's coming out the A mm-hmm. musically, which like I say, what's coming out the A is what's driving the whole United States, driving the country and the world. Our, yeah. our culture is the culture. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. The, as the saying goes, Atlanta influences everything. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. With that being said, what's your what's your take on the state of the music coming out of here right now? I love the music. I, I love what's going on. I love what everybody doing. Um, music, everybody who 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 you who particular who you fuck with right now? Who I like right yeah. now? Um, Whether it's the A or whoever, but it's I like Atlanta. Who coming up out the A that I, you fuck with? That I like. Um, man, it's a lot of cats I like. Man, I, Migos. I, of course, you I fuck love with Migos. Them? Yeah, I love Migos. Yeah. Migos, they they they. I think they're going crazy right now. I love that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think um, you got cats like um, like Wyatt Lucci. You got um, yeah. Shout out to Corner Cash Lucci. too, man. Welcome home to the boy Corner Cash, man. Like that was a little cat. That's a talented little dude, man. Um, a lot of people don't realize, man. That that's one of the cats that um, you know he he he's a he's a he's real talented, man. People don't even know it, man. They think. Okay, this little dude off the west side. Man, that dude was amazing. Who he signed to? Um, hopefully he'll be signed to me. What's his name again? <laughs> don't worry about it. But <laughs> um, but yeah, but I nah. can rewind this yeah, shit again. Who is back. the who is the nigga, man? Anyway, but yeah, shout we out to talking that boy about right no, right we talking about nigga that people need to nah, check for. Okay, people, whether or not you go sign nah, or not, nah, nah, folks nah, still nah. need this, to check this, for. This is what I think. I think right now I got a cat that um I picked up. Um, his name is Crazy the Don. He's a um, crazy. Yeah, he's a dope. Char- he's a character, man. Okay. Um, and people be people be, we, people be like, you, man, why you be signing these cats? They they something special about them. So, but yeah, with him, he's a new cat that I like though. But it's a lot of cats. Um, like I said, Outside Lucci. Of niggas that you trying to say. Okay. Lucci, Lucci. You got the Lucci. You got the Migos. You got um, who was in Atlanta, man? Um, you got Jacquees. Um, mm-hmm. he's he's um. Talented little guy. You got um, it's so many of them in Atlanta, man. That um, every we, every two weeks you got a new one. You know what I mean? So I what think, kept us relevant like this? I mean, I know good music. I, I'm gonna tell you what it is. We got studios and producers, and, and we got people ready to spend some money and some great songwriters. That's what we always had in Atlanta. That's why L.A. back down here now. Yeah. You know, L.A. back at down here. He said, I'm gonna get come it. back to the original. The original spot where yeah, I created. Yeah, the house is just a little bit different now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's, it's scattered it's, now. It's definitely a lot. Know. It's a lot different. It was more. Yeah. It was well. I want to say small. It's just. Yeah, but well, now you got yeah. a you got a lot of cats that that know that Atlanta has pushed that button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. L.A. When they was here, man, you know, it, it was like they was the go to label. Yeah. It wasn't really no other options out here. You know what I mean? But you know now it's like. You know, you got some solid companies down here that are putting out good music and mm-hmm. doing good numbers. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, but I think Atlanta, we we always been that place to come get that good why, music. Why do you think we still ain't had a major label lo- relocate here? All it, you know, you got it's Nashville, control. the hub. It's, it's of, control. Nashville is the hub of country music, and yeah. every major got a they got an office there. Yeah, it's Atlanta political. is the hub, mm-hmm. the hub for. Urban music, yeah. but ain't nobody really came here like that, dog. I mean, they not gonna do that. That's political. It's like you know, you got they didn't move Hollywood to Atlanta. Yeah, you know what I mean. But you ain't gonna see no big office come down here. They just those, those companies are going. They they are already building stuff here. They already yeah, got yeah yeah uh, uh, what um uh, um uh, uh, you know where they, they shoot stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. They they they, come, they, they it's, here. It's, it's here. But. You, Music wise, mm-hmm. with us being the driving force of the culture, we always got to go to New York or L.A. or L.A. I and don't know. Ain't man. nobody here. I think that's one of those things where they know if they put one of them down here, they know we ain't got to go nowhere. And I don't think they want that. I think they want to keep us to where we got to come see them. You is know that I mean? um, is that a black white thing with Atlanta being? <clears throat> excuse me. 
uh, Chocolate City and knowing that this is a culturally African American uh, driven city, do you think that has something to do with it? Um, could be. Um, it could be. I I know that you know when I when I have to have certain conversations, I have to either send somebody to New York or make my way to New York, hmm. and I don't think that's cool. But you know, New York is the place where you got a lot of media. You got so much other stuff up there. Yeah. To where until and that'll never change. New York is well, just is New York's gonna be New York, but I think that through time, like Hollywood is coming here, I think the music industry could end up coming here and setting up shop. What is go take my nigga? I mean, shit. What else it we ain't, gotta I do? Mean, we had shit. We've been. Come on, man. We've been a driving force. You know what? Shit for I years. think it's gonna take somebody who takes time and smart enough to say, you know what? I could do what they doing. What Tyler did, Tyler made them people come here. I think. Hmm. Tyler and other cats they made them say you know what we need to come down here because we can shoot movies it's not going to cost as much to do it here hmm. man they shooting everything here so I mean everything. with the music we making Billion all the music industry. here we making all the, I didn't know Wale was down here recording all that music Ain't that, damn I didn't know that either I didn't, I'm like they, they said yeah Wale right over there so you know when you be in studios and stuff you running to everybody you be like damn you down here working so Atlanta's, who you want to work with dude um, you done work with a lot of folks but who 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 would you want your phone to ring hey, you know, and hear somebody from their camp or them hey, listen, hit you I, and say, and you'd be like, yeah, that's what I, I really want to Man, it might sound crazy, but when I was when I was um, real young, Don't say man, RuPaul either. I know, nah, you know RuPaul, RuPaul got a different type of relationship. Hey, man, you ain't going to get me in that political stuff about that stuff. I'm going to leave them people alone. Wait, oh, you, what you talking about? I just said mm -hmm. I know you and RuPaul got a... No, but... What? Okay, outside of RuPaul. Go ahead, then. Who? Ain't no RuPaul Who? nothing. <laughs> RuPaul ain't got nothing to do with Nitty. That ain't got nothing. We are not connected. That's that's our respect. That's that's your boy. <laughs> Anyway, 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 what was you about to say? Believe it or not, you was about to say. Nah, I'm telling you that. Um, real talk though. I, growing up, I remember um, a lot of the older ladies. You know, I was, you know, I used to like older ladies when I was little. I'd be looking at their legs and they curve, whatever they. Anyway, I used to like this lady named Anita Baker. So you act like this, I had, this lady <laughs> named Anita Baker. But go ahead. Listen though, man, I had the opportunity to go and see Anita about two about a week ago. Yeah. Man, amazing. You know what I mean? So Incredible. Yeah. That's like, who you want to work with. I want to work with somebody like her saying that she's on her last tour. Yeah. That's an icon. You know what I mean? I, 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 it's no rap nigga out here impressing me right now. I was just about to ask you, what, rap, not, what rap nigga you want to fuck with? None. I'm not impressed by none of them. You know what I mean? Like, everybody doing what they doing, but, like, I'm not really like, oh, that's the he doing something new. Everybody talking the same shit. You know what I mean? Everybody now to the new people and the new people who liking hip hop music. Yeah, you got new kids turning eighteen every day. New kids turning twelve. So now they, oh, they might say, um, Gucci is the newest, hottest artist out. Man, Gucci been around twenty years. Damn right. But they don't know it. You know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not really. I want to work with somebody who, you know, outside of hip hop. You know what I mean? But man, I love Anita Baker. Man, like um. Shit, nigga, I was sitting there looking, listening to her, nigga. Who like, don't love Anita Baker? Man, I was like, nigga, I was in the hotel, nigga. She came across, it was like an angel walked by, nigga. She just walked by the lobby. I don't know where she was going. She was going back to her room or something, but I did see her, man. She was like an angel, though, man. But somebody like her, Stevie Wonder, them type yeah. of cats. Yeah. So, no, not on the rap shit. Not, not, no, not mm. no rap shit. Nah, I'm What's good. next? And we talked about this yeah. earlier, but, mm -hmm. you know, we mentioned Day Day, but mm -hmm. what else is coming through the pipeline? Um, for folks who okay. who just getting familiar with Nitty yeah. Nitty Beats Playmaker, yeah, what's what's coming through the pipeline? Folks um, know Day Day. Day Day had two big records. Yeah, working on a movie. Um, we um doing the um we putting that together right now. Um, hopefully we'll have that out. Um, I think we're looking at the fall of 2019. Okay. So we're working on a movie right now. So I can't give no a lot of details, but it's gonna be a comedy. Okay. You know what I mean? So um. We and you, um, you wrote and produced it. Yeah, I wrote and produced it. Um, it's 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 real crazy. So okay. I'm working on that, man. I want to get in that. I got a couple of um, pilots I'm about to start shooting um, on some other type of TV shows and stuff, man. So I'm just trying to just um, do all type of stuff. Working on a book, uh, a lot of stuff. Just let people know what I'm going through and what I'm doing now. And you know, I, I, right now I don't think I peaked my, in my career yet. Yeah, is what I want. What I want to do. You know, mm -hmm. everybody making music. So let's see what else, you know, can be done. But I'm, I'm musically, I'm, what's coming next musically? 
Um, no telling, man. I got a, I got my eyes on a couple of acts, but um, I got a, um, a lot of new acts I, I did some deals with. Mm -hmm. So I'm uh, working on some new stuff. Let me see what's going, what go on, what pop, what you know, what people like. Now my co-host was here. She always asks this question. Okay. This is one question she always asks. So I gotta ask it. Okay. Jamie Page not here, but I gotta ask it. What's her name? Jamie Page. Okay. How you and Jerry Clark meet? I mean, you met. Oh. Here we go. Here we go with this. No, see, that's good. Nah. That's the question she would ask. How you and Jerry Clark meet? I'm trying to put up. Um. Nah, me and, um, how, how did we meet, man? Um, to be real, um, man, I think. I don't even remember. Was, man, it, was think, it doing jock stuff? It might have been. I mean, I had been seeing you a while, but I, I didn't know what you did. Uh, but, like, once I seen that you was actually the guy that, that played the spoons on, um, nah, I'm playing. Nah, you, you, um, you was, you was out here making moves, bro. And, and I always, you know, I, I watched. And see who doing what in the city, but you was doing a lot of stuff, and um, I think we met though working during. Um, I thought it was doing jobs. Doing project. young job, uh -huh. I think so, and um, you know, but you know, you was always doing so much stuff, man. I didn't know what you was doing. <laughs> you had your hands in a whole lot of stuff, man. Hey, so man. I, I didn't know. Just, what was I, going was, on. I, I think you was you and um you and Kilo were roommates, right? <laughs> I remember somebody said y'all hey, had a apartment over there on Bolton Road. I <laughs> You and a Kilo, studio, a you studio. And, <laughs> you and Kilo had matching robes over the. <laughs> shout out to Josh. Hey, nah, I know you and Kilo had an apartment. I remember <laughs> they were talking about it. They said that shit was laid too. <laughs> had the beads and everything. <laughs> the incense burning. I said you and Kilo had a goddamn. Shout out to Kilo Alito. Hey, hey, Kilo done a lot for this Atlanta coach. Hey, man, man, shout out to that boy Kilo, <laughs> man. Like Kilo had it rocking, nigga. But yeah. Oh shit! Nah. But yeah, that, that that yeah. So I I I know. That you know when I was uh you know when I <laughs> I was doing a lot of stuff I had production deals I was hey man you, know, you were doing was, a whole I, lot though I, man you were doing more than I know and like no I, I mean I, I, just, I, I just was I, I just had a, a, a had my hands in this Atlanta music movement so hard and then when you see somebody like this no nah, no nah, man the I'd, I'd say thank you though to, on your show man like thank you because you did a lot of stuff that people didn't see was going on and you helped a lot of people out. That didn't know you were helping them, so you know you gotta always salute somebody like you. You you doing a lot, man. Real talk, man. And like you know you, what, Nitty man. Yeah. I wish I had it got compensated more. Now I I made great money. Yeah, yeah. But you know some of the things is you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, man, you, there, there's a lot of people that come through this this industry that um. Uh, man, I'm gonna tell everybody, man. Get your money. If somebody owe you something, get you get some it. fucking paperwork. Get some good paperwork. Because them handshake agreements with 99% of, nah. 90, 95% of folk don't mean shit. No, nah, it don't mean that, man. So, I mean, but you always did good stuff, man. And, you know, you was always, one thing about you, man, is is you knew where to position yourself to make sure that you can keep everything going on your end. But, you 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 know, you did a lot hey, to, Nitty, to put people wanted, on. Bro, I just wanted talk. to break it, man. I appreciate yeah. it. I just wanted to break yeah. a lot of artists and, you and, did push, it. and push this. Mm -hmm. Push Atlanta even farther. That's mm -hmm. all I ever wanted to do. That's all I'm trying to do now. Mm -hmm. Even with this podcast, yeah. that's why it's important for people to know about. Yeah, people like you. Yeah, no, really I, I, I appreciate you having me come down, man. You know, like, like I said, I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't talk a lot to people, man. But yeah. you know, when you said come on down, we've been trying to get it together about three months, man. But and I apologize, bro. But man, me too. Now. Yeah, I you messed up too, man. <laughs> I, I had got, to cancel one time. Yeah, man, he so, canceled on me. I was like, man, I said so. I said, well, maybe he got a lot of stuff going on, but. Yeah, nah, this, I mean, this podcast is something, and for those who are watching, if, whether this is your first episode or you watch all of season one or you just jumping into season two, it's for people like him and you all to see the guests that's coming on that um, it's very important for people to know. Uh, Where's Kilo right now? It's important for people to know. <laughs> <laughs> all right, my bad. I'm really hey, man, man, anyway, I'm Legendary Jerry. Before I sign off, I get Nitty give me all your social media shit, man. It's Nitty Beats. It's um, it's Nitty Beats. It ain't um, N I T T I B. -E you see, the, see the sweatshirt. The sweatshirt. Yeah, Nitty Beats. Nah, B E A T Z. No, hey. Yeah, it's Nitty Beats. Everything man. is at Nitty Beats. Everything, man. You know what Everything. I mean. Everything. Hey, but congratulations on your man, show, no, man. Hey, man. Like, I appreciate real talk, you, man. man. You're doing Seriously, a good thing. Man. Before Don't we stop. Huh? Go Don't ahead. Don't stop. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> I told y'all this nigga right here, damn, nigga could be a stand up comedian. Nah, man. A lame ass stand up comedian, but he could stand up there. Nah, man, I wouldn't do uh, that, man. But you know, every episode I dedicate to two people uh, the late 
uh, Shakir Stewart, who did a lot for me in my career and personally. And of course, uh, my father, the late, great Thomas Clark. I want to dedicate every episode to those two individuals. And uh, Shakir was good people, man. Yeah, yeah. that was my, my dog. Yeah. So I want to, hey, Nitty, once again, I appreciate you coming on. Thank Nitty you. Beats, all his social media. Social media for the podcast, Legendary Jerry Podcast. And um, I'm Big Jerry Clark at Instagram, whatever. But um, signing off this week, Legendary Jerry. Story time with Legendary Jerry. Signing off, Jerry Clark. Nitty, we out of here.